Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this afternoon's lecture. I'm really excited, genuinely excited, to be welcoming Joanne Greenbaum, a New York-based painter and sculptor. Joanne's work has been featured in solo exhibitions at MoMA PS1, Haus Kunstaktiv in Zurich, Switzerland, the Nerman Museum of Contemporary Art in Overland Park, Kansas, Tufts University Art Galleries at the School of Museum Fine Arts in Boston, Rachel Uffner Gallery, Nino Meyer Gallery in Los Angeles and Brussels, Belgium, Van Horn Gallery in Dusseldorf, Germany, Richard Tellis Fine Art in Los Angeles, Nicholas Krupp Contemporary Art in Basel, Switzerland, Green Grassy in London, and numerous other venues, including D'Amelio Terrasse, a gallery that may have closed, but was had a really interesting program for a couple of decades in, here in the city. And she's got a solo show coming up in May 2024 at Mitchell Innes in Nash, just two blocks away in Chelsea. Joanne has received awards from the John Simon Guggenheim Memorial Foundation. Yeah, that grant the American Academy of Arts and Letters here in New York, New York State Foundation for the Arts, NIFA. I'm sorry, it's New York Foundation for the Arts. Um, and then Joanna's participated in residencies at the Chinati Foundation in Marfa, Texas, um, at Yaddo, at, um, and also in, uh, the Rockefeller Foundation's residency in Bellagio, Italy, uh, at Skowhegan in Maine, and at Yaddo. Her work has been reviewed or discussed or featured in the New York Times several times, the Los Angeles Times, Art Forum, Art in America, the Boston Globe, the Wall Street Journal, Two Coats of Paint, Hyperallergic, the Brooklyn Rail, BOM, Kunst Forum, The New Yorker, and Art on Paper. It's a long uh, bibliography, um, and that was pretty selective. And her work is included in numerous collections, the Rose Art Museum at Brandeis University in Waltham, Massachusetts, the Hammer Museum in Los Angeles, the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, um, the Ross Art Collection at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, and also at some of the museums where she's had solo shows that I mentioned earlier. She received a BA from Bard College. Please join me in giving a very warm welcome to Ms. Joanne Greenbaum. Thank you for inviting me to speak here. Um, so I'm going to start this talk by saying that I haven't talked about my work in quite a few years, so I'm a little rusty. And um, I also decided when um, I was invited to do this that I didn't want to do the same thing that I do, that I always used to do, or that a lot of people do, which is do kind of a chronological, this is what I did when I was a student, this is what I, what I did after, you know, and kind of just, you know, march through the, the, the ages of time. I, I decided that that was really boring to me at this point, because a lot of, I mean, I will show you some of my older work, but I kind of wanted to keep it very in the present and just what I'm, I'm making now. So, I'll just uh, start with the first picture. So this was my last show in Los Angeles at Nino Meyer Gallery this past March. And I hadn't had a show in kind of a while. I had left a gallery in, um, I guess like a few years, like a couple years ago. And then there was just kind of, then there was the pandemic. So nothing was happening. And then, um, you know, it was just kind of this kind of quiet time, which I actually now looking back on it, um, really appreciated um, this time to kind of just like regroup and really think about what I was doing. So anyway, so I found myself getting involved with this gallery called Nino Meyer Gallery and in Los Angeles. Um, I had had a show in Los Angeles like five or six years ago in Richard Tayus Gallery and he closed. So I hadn't really done anything in LA and um, 
from what people told me was that that LA was always very kind of inhospitable to New Yorkers. And there was always this like LA, New York divide, but I was happy to do it. And so because I hadn't had a show in a really long time, and this was a new gallery, new person, <coughs> sorry. Um, I kind of felt like I was sort of all over the place with this show. And and the other thing with this show that I did is that I had I asked, I and usually I'm just one of these people artists that I never really listen to anybody. I just kind of do what I want to do. And you know, even if they let's say don't like it, they usually don't say anything. But this time I said, okay, you know, I always like do what I want to do and don't listen to suggestions. But this time I'll ask the dealer, you know, what do you want from me? And he said, I want like a whole bunch of paintings, all the same size. That was his, you know, all the same size. And I want everything to like, I mean, he does, didn't say he wants everything the same, but in different colors, which is just enough to just make my blood boil because I don't, as you'll see, I don't work that way. I don't make a painting and then make the same thing again in different colors. I, I just don't do that. So, you know, I I kind of felt like I compromised in making a show of everything the same size. And it was actually kind of nice because it it took off took away, you know, that whole thing about, you know, what's going to go where. <laughs> so so I had, so this show was in March and it was actually postponed because I had broken my, my arm and I'm a lefty and I broke my left arm. So I couldn't work for about three or four months. So I had to postpone this show. So the minute I started working again, um, this is the show. So as soon as I started working again, I was kind of, I, I actually had a lot of, I didn't have that much time to do, to do this show. So, you know, I ordered like, 15 canvases, all the same size. And I just started and I was feeling very kind of all over the place and very, in a way, schizophrenic with, you know, do I want to make painterly paintings? Do I want to make painting? Cause so much of my work is about drawing, but you know, sometimes I'm, I'm uneasy about the drawing part. So cause sometimes I want to make like a painting. Sometimes I want to make a drawing that's really a painting. You know, and and sometimes I want a painting that's going to have everything in it. So, so you know, so I was working on these paintings, and um, you know, kind of like like how I start a painting always. I mean, it doesn't always determine how the painting's going to come out, but with these, I I kind of decided to sort of start with structure. And then I felt like, you know, if I start with structure, then everything will kind of fall into place. So I also, you know, when I work, I work with, um, I work with a lot. I, I use tons of different materials in my paintings. I use acrylic, I use flash, I use marker, I use oil paint, I use ink, um, I use pencil, I use crayon. I mean, I kind of gotten to the point where you know, I, I kind of just see what the painting needs. And also, I also like the different temperatures of, you know, like if, you, like sometimes like the matteness or the flatness of flash contrasted with oil paint. Like I, I think like when I, I don't really teach and I never really had a, a, a full-time teaching job, but the few times I've taught, I always would, something I, that I would always say to students was, you know, like, you know how I'm sure there are people here that do this where everything in their in their palette is the same brand and the same kind of paint. And there's a sameness that happens with that. And so I, I really kind of mix it up a lot. So anyway, so I made 15 paintings for this show. They're all really different from each other, I think. Um, so we didn't have room for 15 paintings. We had room for eight paint, wait, one, two, three, four, eight paintings. Um, and I let the dealer, I let him, Nino Meyer, just 
I said, you know, he knows his space, let him choose. He knows his clients, let him choose. So in my opinion, he left out some really good ones, but he, I think that, you know, he really liked, um, like busy, he sort of likes busier paintings. And I kind of, I, I sort of tend to like my paintings that are a lot simpler and more reductive. And I think that's in a way, the struggle that I go through every day in my studio. It's like how far to go, when to stop. Do I really want to make this crazy decorative painting with, you know, tons of stuff in it? Or do I want to go like a lot more minimal? And and that's just, that's, that's my dog, by the way, just for size. Um, I just, um, you know, so like that's, that's kind of, I think my current struggle with my work is how far to go or how le le or how much less to do. Um, and I think lately it's the, the over overworking, I don't even think it's overworking, but <clears throat> I, I tend to, I'm putting more in my paintings than I actually kind of want to um, here. So here's, a good example of, of a painting that I think I let, I stopped way before I would, you know, like, I think this is more, one of the more reductive paintings in the show. Um, and, and, you know, I really wanted to show kind of structure and then breaking my structure. And the thing is with, with my work is that I, I'm kind of never satisfied and I, and, you know, even though sometimes I stop a painting um, and then say it's finished, maybe sometimes before it even is finished, because I, I want to, I want to be able to keep in a way the bones of the painting um, evident. And I don't, I don't really, I mean, when I work, I don't really cover up that much stuff. I kind of let every phase of the work kind of be out there for to see. So even though, you know, you probably could look at this and say, well, I guess that light green circle was the last thing I did. It actually was not. Um, and so I don't like to, I don't, I, it's like, you know, sometimes I go to someone's show in, in Chelsea or wherever, and, and I could say, okay, I could see exactly where they started and exactly where they left off. I like to confuse things a lot, a lot more. I like to make confusing paintings. I like to make things that are kind of confusing that you don't really know what's going on. Um, you know, cause people, I'm sure you know this and, and I do the same thing. Like if I go into a show, I, I don't really look very long at stuff. Like I make up my mind right away. Do I like it? Do I not like it? Very, very few, there's like, I'm not that engaged with um, with like looking at a painting I don't like. So I think a long time ago, I somehow decided that I was gonna make paintings that would try to engage the person to sort of like figure out what's going on. Like, like you know, what is this painting about? So anyway, so let me just finish with this show. So I made this show, everything was, kind of, there was a nice, I felt like there was a nice dialogue going on between the work. Um, I also wanna say that I always, I mean, sometimes I just don't even know what I'm doing and, or I, I trust, I trust my whole life of being a painter to think, to, to be able to just like leave it at that and just say, well, you know, I'm just gonna trust that whatever I, I know inside of myself is going to be okay. Like I don't over intellectualize my work. Um, it doesn't mean I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a dumb painter. You know, I, I'm not, I, I feel like I, I have a, a huge engagement with the history of painting and my contemporaries. Um, but I kind of don't sweat it. Um, I, I don't, like to hear what people, I, I, this sounds crazy, but I don't really like, like if I'm working on a body of work for a show, I'm not the kind of artist that calls in everyone I know 
for their opinion or I, I don't want to know. So, you know, um, so, I, you know, I want to figure it out for myself. So in a way, every painting is, you know, they're like puzzles in a way. And I like to figure it out myself. I don't want to be told that this one doesn't work. If it doesn't work, I probably know that and will be able to figure that out for myself. So this is just a little painting in my studio. Um, I've been making a whole bunch of small paintings where I've been gluing two canvases together. So this is like a little circle glued onto a square. And the whole painting is pretty much, actually I changed it by now, but it's pretty much all um, marker. Um, also, you know, when you use marker, you should always spray with um, a UV a UV matte medium because even though the, the markers might be permanent, sometimes they do fade. Anyway, so this painting is, is a little older. I wanted to show it just because I really like it. And it's, it's one of those paintings of mine that I think really um, speaks to working with structure and drawing at the same time, like really in tandem. So, you know, sometimes lately what I, I've been doing is that, you know, if I do something kind of very structural, I kind of, I like to just then take some, a palette knife and just, you know, just, you know, make some, just do some paint splotches right on top of it to kind of counterbalance the structure. But I think with this one, I was just really into the kind of the the, the initial drawing in, in this purple color over the yellow. And then it kind of just grew from that. Um, and this painting is somewhere in Germany. I'll probably never see it again because people from Europe don't like to pay to ship work, to ship unsold work back because they, they paid so much money to get it there. And then you know, it's it's just kind of impossible, but I love it. And uh, I hope someday to see it again. Um, anyway, so, you know, also I, I always, um, not always, but I think since I started showing my work in the, in the mid to late nineties at D'Amelio Terrasse, a gallery that Mark said that, that closed in 211, um, I always would make paintings on on just the the bare gessoed ground, and, and um, you know some and and in a way like the white ground like for me it's not white for me it's just blank, so you know I I used to talk a lot about um, the performative aspect of my work. You know, so like you're performing with paint on this blank ground. And, you know, I still have that habit. Like when I start a painting, most of the time, I do not put a ground on, colored ground on. Um, I find that if you do put a colored ground on, that kind of, sometimes it's very limiting, especially if it's a darker ground, which I almost never do. Um, there are times when I, I've, covered something in black gesso just to kind of see what happens. But if you cover something in black gesso, it's very hard to color just doesn't sing on top of like a dark ground for me. So like, I just think because I'm so interested in color and saturation and purity of color and that I, I find that the co like color looks the best or it comes out the way that I like it on on the white on the white gesso, um, you know, kind of like, you know, like if when you work with water. I mean, even though my paintings are far from watercolors, but when you work with watercolor, it's like watercolor. You know, you're you're using the the white of the page um, to to make the luminosity of the colors sing. So anyway, this is a this is an installation. Um, at a show from last year that I was in when I was inducted into something called the National Academy of Design. And they've since moved, they were in a building uptown that they sold and then they had temporary quarters here at this um, 
the Gramercy Arts Club where they camped out for a while. So they did a, a sh they did some shows there. So this is a show that I that, so they put me in this show there of the the recent inductees, and I really loved showing my work in this kind of old, kind of you know dilapidated room. Um, you know, because we're so used to showing and looking at artwork in, you know, the white, the pure white cube. So this was really a treat for me to see these paintings in kind of a, just a different um, environment. Um, and these, these paintings that you're seeing, these were all done kind of during the period kind of maybe right after the pandemic, where I had like made a lot of work that nobody saw. I didn't have a gallery, I didn't have any shows lined up. I mean, galleries in, in New York. Um, and, you know, kind of a very freeing time. Um, I mean, I think, you know, working towards shows is really fun and, you know, you're very directed and, you know, you wanna please them and you wanna make the best show you possibly can. But there is something to be said for, just working without having anyone seeing what you're doing and um, trying out new things and experimenting and you know not feeling like anyone's looking over your shoulder. Here's two of those paintings. So so like I think the painting, the more colorful painting on the white ground, like I really, you know, I love to make work where I kind of make this game for myself where I go, okay, I'm gonna use every color that's on my painting table and I'm not gonna repeat, you know? So so like, how do you do that? How do you make a painting about that? How do you structure that? Like, can you make, can you work structurally and kind of be very um, free with, with what you're doing and, and not planned out? And so, you know, like, I think my work is very incremental and, and kind of I, like I do something and then do the next thing. And, and, but I don't, even though I think a lot of my work looks like it's very fast, my work is actually very, very, very slow, especially lately and over the years, it's just gotten slower and slower and slower. And what that means is, is that I take my, even though, you know, some of the, some of the gestures and marks are fast marks, there, sometimes there's weeks between one thing and the next thing, or, you know, like I might come home from this lecture and look at something in the studio and do like one splotch of paint that I just think maybe could go on top of something else. And then maybe I'll leave that for a week or a few days. Um, the other thing that's sort of contributed to the slowness is that I, um, I bought a house in Long Island about, uh, three and a half years ago. That's also an, a studio. You know, I, I'm very grateful and fortunate to have been able to do that. And so I, I now split my time. I now have basically two studios, a New York studio and a Long Island studio. And it's really been interesting because, you know, I split my time between the two. So I've got two bodies of work going. I don't really see a difference in work between the two places, but, you know, one's in the country, one's in the city. So, you know, my life in the country is a lot different than my life in the city. And in the country, it's slower. I just sit around. I stare into space half the day. And then maybe I'll like attack a painting in some way. Um, oh, this is also the uh, the National Arts Club again um, with another one. And then those are some of my sculptures on the mantelpiece, which I'll get into soon. So, <coughs> so you know, as I said, I split my time between two studios, but I only make sculpture out on Long Island because that's where I have a kiln and you can be messier there in the garage. So I make clay sculpture and I started doing that a, a while ago, like in 2003, I was teaching one summer at Skowhegan in Maine and 
there's just, you know, like, I don't know if any of you have ever been there, but there's a, it's, it's a nine week program for faculty. You're there more like 10 weeks. So it's a long stretch of time. And I found myself, you know, making these paintings and sort of feeling like, you know, I need to do something else. So, you know, I went into town to Michael's and got Sculpey. And so I started making these teensy, teensy little sculptures out of Sculpey. And I had never, literally, I had never made a sculpture in my life. Didn't know what I was doing, but it was really fun. So when I got back to the city, I enrolled in uh, Greenwich House Pottery to because I really liked it. And so I said, you know what, if I'm gonna like this, I've got to learn how to do stuff. So I enrolled in Greenwich House Pottery and took like a hand, you know, basic hand building class, which, you know, was really fun. And I ended up going there for quite a few years. Um, and then I, it, it just, I didn't really want to do it because it's expensive and I, I ended up hardly ever going there, but, uh, but it's a way to work and a way to get your stuff fired. And, you know, once you enroll in a class there, like the, the clay is free, you just pay for firing clay and glaze is free. Plus they have, you know, interesting teachers. And I would always just take a class where the teacher would just not tell you what to do. I mean, there are classes where, you know, they, they teach you how to make a pinch pot. I mean, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to do my wing nut sculptures. Um, and I, and again, like in, with my painting, I didn't want to be told what to do or what I was doing was ridiculous because it is ridiculous. I don't know what I'm doing half the time with sculpture. Most of my stuff cracks. A lot of it blows up in the kiln. A lot of it doesn't stand up straight. Um, I end up repairing a lot of them with epoxy. I don't care. I mean, I'm not a ceramicist. I don't aspire to be, you know, I don't aspire to make these things gigantic. I don't have, I mean, I'll, I'll make a monumental painting, but I don't have, I don't have ambition to be, to make monumental sculpture. Um, I mean, in a way, the sculpture is very much like drawing for me, um, you know, where I sit at a table and, you know, sometimes I've got like a movie on or the news on or music. I don't really listen to music talk, something talk on, podcast maybe. And I just sort of, you know, zone out and like make these things. So, you know, there's no plan. There's no, there's nothing. And so in a way I approach sculpture, you know, very much the way that I approach drawing where it's like, they're very free. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. Like this orange one that you see, I really love it. I think it's terracotta and that's um, an orange glaze. Um, and, you know, I'm not really that into glazing because you know, glazing's like a whole, a whole involved thing. And that people who are, you know, really into it, people who are, you know, professional ceramicists or sculptors, I mean, they, they make their own glazes, you know, they really experiment. I, I just, you know, so lately I'm not even glazing at all. I'm just, I'm just leaving the clay like this. This is actually spray painted, uh, I think copper color. So this is, this was a clay sculpture and I just spray painted it with um, copper, probably Rust-Oleum. I mean, I mean, the thing is, is that there's, you know, even though it's clay, I mean, there's no rules. So, you know, a lot of my, my sculptures are colored with magic marker, uh, crayons, spray paint. I don't always use, use glaze. Um, and, you know, I, I don't really think about as I said before, I don't, I just kind of start, like, I think this type of thing is really hard for me because, you know, like working with slabs, you need patience. And I have absolutely no patience. Like I'm much better at these free form things where I'm just kind of like winging it with clay. I think this, these are much harder to do. Um, and I never get it right. Um, so this is a drawing show I had last year at Nino Meyer Gallery in Brussels. 
And this show came about because he, somebody quit, the, whoever was gonna have a show there backed out. And he had all these drawings of mine that were already framed. And he just called me and he says, I'm just gonna put up, I'm just, I'm just gonna like do a show of your framed drawings in Brussels. You don't have to go. I'm not going, but I'm just going to put it up. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm not going to say no. Um, but I was happy. And, you know, because I hardly ever show my drawings. Um, you know, most of the galleries that I show at never are interested. Um, I'm a big, big drawer. Um, I draw all the time, every day. I'm a, you know, I don't want to use the word doodle, but I'm one of these people that I'm like, even if, you know, I'm watching a movie, I'm drawing, you know, if I, you know, I'm just always just drawing. And so I draw a lot with ballpoint pen, pencil. I love watercolor and gouache. So these are watercolor. Um, I love beautiful, good paper. <clears throat> Excuse me one sec. Um, I love beautiful, good paper. So there really is a difference um, between good paper and bad paper. Um, this, these, these are probably cotty paper, which is easy to find, but I find cotty paper just really uses, takes watercolor really beautifully. Um, and so, you know, like in my drawings, I don't, I don't, duplicate what I make in painting so much. It's like they're, I think my drawings are like, you know, they're much looser. The, these drawings, the, this is red pencil. So this is just like a red vermilion pencil on, on like kind of a buff paper. Um, I like to, when I draw, especially with like colored pencil or ballpoint pen, I kind of get into real detailed drawings. I mean, I think that I always, from from even when I was a teenager, loved like like classical drawing and Picasso's drawing, you know, like like just I always just got that right away, you know, like like just you know I was never into like flimsy drawings, like I really like to just like go over structure again and again and again. Here, you could see it on these. This is, these are um, watercolor. No, these are, the, I think these were marker, those Tombow markers that are water soluble. So I think I made, did something with that and then I poured water on it. And then when the, pa when the paper dried, I went on top of it with a black ballpoint pen. So drawing in ballpoint pen is so great because I mean, the ink is so oily and you know how like when you use a pen, you know, it gets all kind of just oily and blobby. And that's like, I love that. And so like, you know, I'll just say, well, I'm just gonna make this drawing until the pen runs out, you know, which, you know, the, you just keep going until the pen runs out. Then you just take another pen, make another drawing. I mean, it's, you know, again, it's like this constantly sort of playing games with myself. But also, I, I just think that there's this part of me that is so interested in kind of like, I mean, this is the old fashioned part of me that like, I love like, um, like classical cubism and analytical cubism. And so like, I'm always kind of drawing about space and volume and and structure and so like you know if I do drawings like this then I go to a painting it's almost like you know like maybe I mean I love you can liken it to sort of like maybe a pianist doing scales for five hours before they they go to their pieces so this is part of the installation some watercolor sorry it's not too as close up as you can but you could see those um, okay, so this is a pretty big painting. This was in a show like almost a year ago at Chimen Reed that uh, Jay Gorney, a curator, put together, and it was called I forget something Kimber. It was it was it was a show. There's this artist named Kimber Smith that Jay Gorney really liked. You could look look him up and see what his work is like. So he chose some artists whose work he felt somehow related to Kimber Smith. So this is a big painting. Um, it's like, it's like I think 90 tall by 70 wide. 
and, you know, kind of, you know, less all over drawing than I usually do more structure. Um, you know, I, I just think, I mean, the other thing that sometimes I, I play around with is sort of this idea of making, like, I think it's really easy for me to make something that looks beautiful. And I mean, that's not a bra that's not a humble brag or a, or a brag, but it's like, you know, I know how to do that. So, you know, every time I make a painting, I, I try to somehow counterbalance that somehow with something. So I think, you know, maybe with this, it was like those, those red corners with like that, that that's probably a, like a graffiti marker, like one of those Montana markers that I really like to use or a, a thick or a, a acrylic marker. They make them now, I forget the company, but um, anyway, so, you know, like I just try to counterbalance like something that like may maybe looks sort of traditionally quote beautiful or pastoral because like this was like all these blues and pinks and it's like, okay, what do you do? Um, Anyway, also I love, I really like working big. Um, I, I think for this upcoming show, they told me don't make them too big because it's just hard to sell really giant paintings. So again, I'm gonna say, okay, I'll, I'll try to make smaller paintings. I don't really want to though. So I'll probably try to have one, a couple real giant ones that no one will buy, but that's okay. <laughs> um, you know, just because nobody wants these giant paintings. Um, but anyway, but I feel like when I work really big is that I feel freer. Um, this was this was in a show um, somewhere in Mexico City. And I love this painting so much. Um, it's now at Mitchell, Innes and Nash. This is, I think this is their viewing room. Um, I just, you know, the thing is with, with my work is that I always, like, I, I feel like I'm a colorist, whatever that means, that I'm not afraid of color, that I try to use color. I always also think, I always think of kind of color combinations that, that speak to me. So red and black is something that like I always do sometimes. Red and pink is always another really wonderful color combination. So like I always just, I mean, it's a very personal, everyone has their color combinations that are there in a way they're, their defaults. So, you know, this is kind of like my default. Um, but like with this, you know, I think I started this painting with this blue structure and then somehow I wanted to interrupt it. So I think I took the pink paint with a palette knife and just scraped it all on. And then, and I think that red and the red and black kind of just came at the end of this painting. Um, okay, so now I'm going back in time. These are, th so these two paintings were like last summer when I signed on to this new gallery, Mitchell Innocent Nash, they did a summer show and they wanted, they thought it would be a good idea to show some older work of mine. So this painting towards the back is really big. This painting is like 120 by 100, something like that. It's gigantic painting. It's from 2003, which, you know, honestly doesn't feel like so long ago, but it really is. Um, and this painting kind of, you know, was, is, is an example of stuff I was doing in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, where there was not so much drawing in the painting as there is now, where it was like, you know, I was kind of, you know, very interested in kind of <coughs> a structure. I didn't use a lot of curved lines. I didn't use a lot of gesture. I, I think it took me a really long time to come around to gesture. Um, I think for a lot of reasons, um, that probably I'm not the best one to talk about, but I think that being a woman and like, I guess, I guess I have this chip on my shoulder about 
like being pigeon, like not so much now, but then being pigeonholed as like a woman painter. And that I, I tried to like, it's like, no, no. I mean, it doesn't mean that I'm wasn't that I'm not a feminist or I not woman identified, but like, I didn't want, because that was in, in there are times in our history where, you know, that was a derogatory statement. So I think in the nineties, that was kind of a derogatory statement. So I wanted to, to not be that. It's like, I'm not that I'm not that I'm, I'm a tough intellectual painter. So I tried very hard not to use sort of gesture and, you know, a lot, like I tried very hard to make tough paintings. And I think I did, but I don't, I don't think, and I, and I also think that my work is very feminine in a way, um, in a lot of ways. Um, I think fearless in the face of some kind of adversity, the, 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 the fact that I kind of just kept going, even though, you know, I, I like being ignored and kind of keep going and being ignored and turned down for things. And just like, I always, I, I think like for me, I always just kept going somehow, you know, and I still kind of just keep going somehow. I don't know how, but it, it, it just keep going. And, you know, I, I try not to listen to like all the, the, the noise out there. And, and I think that like lately, I mean, even just like this last week, you know, as we've all been just glued to the news and everything terrible that's happening in the world. It's like the other night I was like, just like watching the news and I've got, and kind of looking at the news and looking at Instagram kind of all at the same time. And I'm just saying, Joanne, you've got to turn this off. Like, this is just like get the noise away from you and even today when I was driving in from Long Island I took the bus and like you know you're not allowed no one's allowed to like make noise on the bus this is the the jitney and so like they make an announcement when you, when you get on the bus they go no cell phone calls no loud music no talking and it's so nice because like you just like I just zoned out on the bus today and you know, but I think that, I mean, I'm just using that as an, an analogy because I just, you know, we all have so much noise in our heads about what we should do, what we shouldn't do, what you're allowed to do as an artist, what you're not allowed to do. And, you know, I always just kind of just kept going and just kind of did what I wanted to do. Um, so this other painting, this one, I forget the year this is from, it, it's probably from like the mid like 2015 or 16, something like that. I never showed it before. So I was really happy to, to show it. Um, I really love it. It's, it, you know, like, like a lot of my work you could see has always, there's always kind of this, I don't want to say still life structure, but there's always like kind of a table or a shelf or stairs. So like, I'm always just kind of really interested in, in that kind of structure. And so, and it's not like, oh, I'm making a painting about stairs. It's like, I think that I need the structure to kind of build the painting on top of. It, it just gives me like, here, oh good, here. So it just kind of gives me something to like put the abstraction on. It kind of houses it in a certain way. Um, no, the one from the left with like the, the, the circles that's from 2003 Yes, oh my God. and the one, the the, yeah. And the yellow one is, is, is like from like 215 or something like that. Yeah. And so you could see like, in, in this one with the black, there's like, a, I think this was one of the first ones where I took my drawing and applied it to the painting, which I never kind of did that much before. I was really reluctant to bring that into a painting and, you know, like scribble, scribble. And then, you know, like I, I was really reluctant to bring like what my drawings were into the painting, but, you know, I, I think I've, I've, I've come to terms with that. And now, and now I kind of use, use both. Um, so, the other thing that I do is I make, I do glass. So some years ago, not that maybe, maybe right before the pandemic, I did a, 
a glass residency at this, there's this glass place called Bullseye. And they're, they're mostly in the West Coast, but they have an office. They have a, a studio in Westchester. And um, I did a residency there, not where I stayed there, but that I just basically was allowed to use their studio. You know, so I kind of just went once a week on the train and worked in their studio. And what they do there is, I guess it's called, it's not glass blowing, it's called fused glass. And the process is so easy. I mean, it's just flat. They just teach you how to cut glass. And you, you know, they have, they have like millions of colors and, you know, and glass comes in, glass comes in all sorts of forms. There's like powdered glass, it's called frit. And then the, it's like pebbles, big pebbles, little pebbles. There's all sorts of, like, there's rods, there's, there's all sorts of glass, you know, stuff that they do. So you just like take all your, so the residency was so great because you basically could use everything there for free if they chose you as, as the resident because it's really expensive. So I still go there about once every two or three months. And, you know, I have to buy my materials and also pay for studio time, but a little bit of glass goes a long way. And so basically, you know, I like take a piece, I like take colors. Sometimes what I do just because it's more fun is like I go through their garbage. Like, so they have they have like bins for all the, the scraps and that's like my favorite thing. So I just like, you know, I just here, you could see a better one. So like, I just go and like, I find scraps in the garbage, you know, and then like, and so like those lines are like rods and then I just cut up glass. I mean, this one, I like put some clear glass together. It's like, you just kind of, it's just, color. it's like, the process is, it's just kind of collaging in a way with glass, but then it goes in the kiln and it melts to a certain degree. And then the reveal is always just something you, it's like, I just love the reveal um, because it never kind of comes out the way you think it's going to come out. And I mean, now I kind of know what's going to happen, but sometimes you don't know. And sometimes it's just somehow like the whole process, which is so simple, but I just feel like, you know, it's so much fun. And I think that making the stuff out of the glass, just, it kind of like really changed my work a little bit. Um, so here's some more. This is just some drawings that were in a show in Switzerland. Um, I'm just speeding up here because I see I'm going over time. So, okay. Well, anyway, here's um, some sculptures that are sitting on my porch right now. Um, and, you know, as you could see, I, I'm not glazing anymore. I mean, the, the, the terracotta ones are just straight terracotta, no glaze, no overprinting painting. Um, the, the black ones are, are just... Um, clay with like a what they call terra sigillata which is just it's just like a liquid clay it's kind of like an underglaze and it just kind of comes out this beautiful kind of black black color um this other one is just a failed sculpture but i wanted to show it because sometimes i do like that yellow is is underglaze and then that the orange is just just glaze um, so here's a sculpture installation I did at a gallery in Detroit um, that I think is no longer. And so you could see some of them are like, so like the one, one, two, three, four in from the left is, was kind of like a white porcelain sculpture that I painted, that I just drew on with magic marker. Um, and then the, then the, um, that pink and green, that pink one is just, it was, I, I made a plaster mold. So I've used it a couple times as kind of a base. And then I just painted it with oil paint. So, I mean, the thing is you can make clay sculpture and you don't, you don't have to use glaze. You can paint like oil paint goes on ceramic really, really well. Like it almost, it's like a, it just hardens on there and it kind of like sucks in and it just, the surface is, is actually really beautiful. So I'm thinking of doing that more soon. Um, so here's some other ones that are, 
you know, just more simple, you know, like I don't really plan these out. I just kind of use, I do a lot of coil, coil method. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think they relate a lot to my drawings. Um, you know, like here, like, I mean, to me, these are shells. I mean, these are small. These, these, these are like maybe the, the, the highest of this one is maybe 20 inches, 19, 20 inches. I don't really, uh, as I said, I, I don't, I can't really make really big sculpture. Um, and also it doesn't fit in the kiln anyway. So, um, so the, here's just some two close ups of some of the glass work. Um, I mean, you can get really graphic with, with fused glass. Um, the other people that are at the studio, they're not doing anything like what I'm doing. They're making, you know, they're doing bowls and, you know, just weird stuff. But like, I'm pretty much the only, not, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm the only artist there, but I kind of, it's, it's like in the suburbs and I like going there also because my sister lives in the next town. So like, I always make a day of it and you know, it's just, it's just really nice to just sort of work in a non art world environment. And, you know, they let me do it. Um, here's, this is a sculpture installation I did at Richard Tejas in Los Angeles some years ago. And I really wanted to just show these small sculptures, all black glaze or black terracage, um, you know, kind of like just make it, keep it really simple. Um, I want to do this again somewhere. I would like to. Um, here's three more close up. So the one on the on the right is black glaze, shiny. The others are, are I guess maybe they're all black glaze. Um, but as I said, you know, it's it's like I'm not trying to duplicate my paintings and with the sculpture, but I think that you know, you know, they're mine or they're the same kind of line that I, I might use in my drawing. Um, so here's, this is the installation at LA at Richard Tejas Gallery. So, you know, there's, these paintings are, I think they were like, maybe like four, like, I don't know, maybe 50 by, they're, they're medium sized paintings medium-sized paintings, which I, I like to do too. I like working, I, I'm, I'm the type of artist that I can, I can work all sizes, it's just different. Like working bigger is freer, working smaller, it's more object-like, it's just different. It's just a different thing. Like, like I have, oh, I'm gonna show you at the next slide. So here's my studio in Long Island both of these. So you could see like, I'm working now on the one on, on, so like I'm working now on some 40 by 30 inch paintings and I'm kind of just working on them all together. So I'm always moving them around and like adding stuff and putting them in a pile and then like starting new ones. And that the other one, that's just my drawing table with ballpoint pen and my favorite thing, my favorite surface to draw on is that I collect um, really thick announcement cards from fancy galleries because they're the only ones that actually do those now. So like Hauser and Worth, they just have really great announcement cards. So like whenever I go in there, I like grab a, a pile. Gagosian makes really great. And like, they're just, it's just the best surface for, for ballpoint pen. Mm -hmm. So like, I have like huge piles of them in my studio and I'm always like making drawings on top of them. And that's another thing that I hope someday to, to show. I just hear some more paintings, maybe a little different than, than some that you've seen. Um, I've never shown these paintings or I shown them, but I, I don't remember. I mean, I think these were all done like in between galleries when no one was even paying attention or during the pandemic in a way. Um, you know, it's just, it was, you know, it was funny because I was talking to someone about the pandemic and how I just, oh God, I, I just said, you know, I really miss those days because like that those silent silent days where you were just like in your studio and couldn't go anywhere and i got so deep into my work i made planters i made paintings i mean i just drew all the time it was it was quite you know i mean even though it was sort of 
it was like I, I miss the quietness, I think. And I think in a way, I never got over it because I'm still like I I I used to be a lot more social. And I just find that lately I'm just like can't do it anymore. I don't know what it is. Anyway, here's a painting with three paintings on top of it. This was actually at my last show at uh, Rachel Uffner Gallery in 219. So this is a painting, it's 60 by 50. And so there's like three canvases, like one, two, three. And, you know, that was when I, I kind of started doing that like a little bit before, like in 218 or so. Um, um, here's another glass piece. This one, it's like I just put a whole bunch, a few different pieces together. And so, as I said, like the reveal, you know, you kind of just don't know how it's going to come out with like the edges. And so it's always really a surprise. And as I said, I, I think making this work really influenced the work that I'm doing now. So the other thing that I do, and, I, and I, I'm kind of weirdly obsessed with it, is that I make books. And this is now an installation that you could see now at um, in Chelsea at the National Academy of Design. They have a draw a giant giant drawing show that I recommend to go see. It's like huge drawing show of some of their members, but and then some not. And this is in a vitrine. So what I do is I I get paper or I and I, I make books, I make handmade books. And so each handmade book is like specific to a medium so that there'll be a pencil one, there'll be colored pencil one, there'll be a watercolor one, there'll be a ballpoint pen one, there'll be an ink one, you know? So like, so I make these books, you know, maybe like 10, 20, 30 pages each. And then, you know, like they're like sketchbooks. And so like, I just have them, I have hundreds of these books now. And I was really grateful and happy that the curator wanted to show these in a vitrine because that was just kind of what I wanted to do. Um, here's a pile of drawings. This is in my studio now in New York. Um, this painting, it's finished now, uh, but as you could see, there's like a lot, a lot of drawing in it, um, you know, with marker and paint. Um, so, you know, as, as I said, you know, I, I'm always kind of going between drawing, painting, you know, how do I reconcile these different sort of aspects of, of my personality? Here's some work in progress, some small things in Long Island studio. Um, so you could see kind of how I start, you know, I start really simple. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea how the work is gonna come out but it all kind of like happens. Here's like the beginning, here's a finished painting and the beginning of another painting. Um, with this one, I like put a pink ground on and then this, this um, ultramarine blue kind of framing structure. Um, I don't have a picture of how that came out. Um, but okay, so this yellow painting is from like, uh, 2001 or 1999, 2001. And I just wanted to show it because um, just so you could see what some of my earlier work looked like, um, you know, it was very, um, you know, like I, I made this structure like this yellow brick, it's almost like yellow brick sculpture. And then I like, and then and then I sort of placed it in three dimensions in a way and put these little balls in in the sort of negative spaces and then did did this kind of like I don't know fake perspectival border around it um so as I said I like to just play around with all different perspectives and three-dimensionality but keeping like the, the, this sort of flat thing going. The other picture is just my studio. Here's here's a painting like finished and here's part of it where it's unfinished. So you could see with this painting, I drew a lot with colored crayons and then I as the ground and then I kind of just put this painting on top of it, this structure. And so that's the paint, the finished painting. It's in my studio now. I haven't shown it yet. 
Um, here's some sculptures mid working on. Um, as I said, clay is clay is drawing in a way for me. It's, it's just three dimensional drawing. And here's another painting. This is from like 1994. So you could see how, where I've been, where I've gone. And, you know, you know, I think when I made this painting or before I made this, this body of work, I threw out everything that I knew before and I just kind of started with nothing. And so these paintings were, are like, you know, they've got like five dollars, two dollars of paint, not even 50 cents worth of paint on them. And I was really interested in this like very minimal notational type of, of painting. And, and as you could see, I've, I've really changed. But in a way, the bone, like it's still there. You know, as I, I mean, I'm just looking at it now and going, yeah, I, you know, I, I still make that painting. It's just kind of maybe 10 on top of it. Um, here's another painting. Big, big one. Um, this is in my studio now. It's just like magic marker ink. That's all. There's no paint on it at all. I just bought these like shaped canvases from um, on Amazon. Basically, just you can buy triangles, circles, ovals. I just get. I just buy all this stuff and um, just play around. I mean, I think the thing that I want to say is that. Like, I just, you know, I'm just constantly in a state of play and doesn't mean there's no thinking going on, but I'm having a pretty good time. So I think that's it for me. Thank you.